Today, we're gonna to be talking about 10 Rhino tips, tricks, and hacks for architecture students. Let's get straight to the good stuff. My name's Christopher, and here at All Art, we offer an alternative perspective on all things architecture and design. Check out this video linked up here and in the description below. It's a video I made on tips, tricks, and hacks for another popular architecture program. Also, if you wanna hang out until the end, I threw in a bonus tip that you'll probably find pretty helpful. If you're a user of SketchUp, you're well aware of SketchUp's notorious and easy to use push-pull tool. It completely confused me when I noticed Rhino doesn't have something as intuitive. Then I found out about this amazing Rhino hack that changed how I use Rhino forever. This would be Rhino's equivalent of a push-pull tool that you could find in SketchUp. Hold control, hold shift, and click on your object. This is what's called sub-object selection. You can actually select different parts of the object. If I select this top face here, and use my gumball tool to drag it up, I can actually extend it. You can do the same to the other faces as well. The crazy thing is, you can actually do this to edges. So if I use the sub-object selection on this face here, and use the move command, I can actually move it to wherever I want. One time, I was presenting my project to my professor on Rhino, and I accidentally zoomed in way too far and got completely lost within the walls and floor of my model. I zoomed in and out, and I just like couldn't get out of it. I, it was really embarrassing. The best way to avoid this happening to you and to easily move around your model quickly is to bind the command zoom to selected to your middle mouse button. As you can see, I can zoom out, select it, and it brings me right back to it. Zoom out, select it, and it brings me right back to it. To do this, type in document properties, go to mouse on the left hand side, in the text field next to run this macro, I want you to type in the macro that I listed in the description below, which is underscore zoom space underscore selected. If you thought those tips were good, wait until you see these. The wire cut command trims a poly surface with a curve the same way a hot wire cutter would, and you can even choose which direction it cuts in. So for instance, if I wanted to cut this block in half, I could draw a line on it, Run the wire cut command, select your cutting curve, which would be the line, and then select the cube, which is the object you want to cut. From here, press enter. Now it's asking you how far you want it to cut. I'm going to say just cut it all the way through. Now it's asking you which side of the object you want to cut off. So I'm going to select this side towards us, and then press enter. You can even use really weird shapes like this. Let's face it, sections and plans in Rhino is sometimes a laughing matter. If make to do finally works, then you still have a bird's nest of lines to clean up. I promise that you'll use this tip every time you make a section or plan. One quick and easy way to clean all this up is the curve boolean command. Go ahead and type in curve boolean and press enter. Select all your curves and press enter. Now click inside the regions that you want to keep. I'm just going to click outside all of these and it will outline all of my curves. And press enter. You can see that I made an outline of all of my curves. New architecture content is being added to this channel daily. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to invest in yourself. You'll be the first to know about all the new tips, tricks, and hacks as they roll out in the future. All right, let's get back to the video. If you're like me, you're always searching for a specific layer or searching for an object within a layer. Let's say I'm working on this section and I need to know what layer this line is on. Highlight your line and type in set layer to object. And as you can see, it activated the layer of that line so you can find it easily. This tip is so underutilized, I'm guilty of it myself. After we get into a habit of typing commands, we don't even bother writing an alias for it. We just like to type the whole thing in for whatever reason. You can actually set an alias for extrude curve that's only like two or three letters. Mine, for example, is exc. To show how powerful this command is, I ran 20 commonly used Rhino commands back to back without using aliases. And then I ran them again using aliases. It looks like you save about 15 seconds every two and a half minutes, which means you save about six minutes per hour. And let's say you were continuously entering in Rhino commands for about six hours on your project, which is probably an underestimate. It means that you would save a grand total of 36 minutes over the course of six hours. Whoa. 
I'm gonna set a new alias for the command planar surface. So I'm gonna type in capital PS, and I'm gonna go over to the command macro text field, and I'm gonna type in apostrophe underscore planar surface or planar SRF and click okay. So now instead of having to type in planar SRF, I can simply type in PS. We're down to our last three tips and then on to your bonus tip. If you're trying to move an object with the move command and you hold shift, it locks you into an XY axis. This can be annoying if you're trying to move the object in a direction that isn't in the XY axis. If you wanna be able to lock your object in whatever direction you want, simply move it to the direction that you wanna lock it into and before you hit enter, press tab. And now you've locked it into that axis. And if you press tab again, you can lock its central rotation point. Sometimes moving an object around can be rather difficult if you use the move command every time. Select your object and turn on the gumball option. From here, you'll get many different options. Each arrow moves the object in a different direction. The curved lines rotate it in a different direction. And the green, red, and blue boxes stretch it in different directions. If you click one of these options, you can be more specific about what you want to do. I want to move this over 10 inches. If you hold Alt while you use one of these commands, it'll duplicate your object. And last but not least is tip number 10, and right after is your bonus tip. A quick and easy way to manipulate a complex piece of geometry is to select it and use the command solid PT on or solid points on. Press enter. You can see that it places a point on all the vertices. From here, you can select which points you want to manipulate. And I like to use the gumball tool to stretch them around. You can use this command to create some really fun and complex geometries. Now for your bonus tip. This is probably the best tip I can show you. Everyone learns differently and I wanted to make this just in case it's your style. I put a link to my free cheat sheet that includes all 10 of these tips, tricks, and hacks. It's a pretty useful interactive document I designed and it's worth a look. I like to print it out or save it to my computer so I can refer to it easily. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe down below to see future content. Up there is a video that I think you'll probably like and down there is a playlist I compiled of a whole bunch of tips, tricks, and hacks for architecture programs. Right here is a link to my Patreon. You get a whole bunch of cool benefits and exclusive downloads, and your name gets featured in my videos like these amazing people right here. Regardless though, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.